Forget about the color, how white you are, how brown or how dark or how whatever. Repent of your sins, hallelujah. And be baptized. Repent of your sins, hallelujah. And be baptized. Every one of you, hallelujah. The, every one of you, hallelujah. The, every one of you, hallelujah. The, Something else you'll never hear at the Masters University is social justice, critical race theory, white privilege, white guilt, racial identity. We don't teach that. We don't advocate that. That's not biblical. Look, we all understand that the Bible says we're not to prefer one person over another. That in Christ there's neither bond nor free, male or female, Jew or Gentile, we're all one. This is all about identity politics and trying to drag Jesus into identity politics. To hold your head up high, look those people in the face and say, give me something. How incredibly wicked. You know, the whole point of preaching the good news of Jesus Christ is that people know he is their Lord and Savior. Therefore, we confess out of our mouths, believe in our hearts that he died and rose again, that our souls might be saved from eternal damnation. First John chapter one, verse eight and nine says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The mark of a true believer is to practice being a student and disciple of the Most High God, to be more cognizant of your sin nature than you are of your calamities and necessities uh, and entertainment, uh, your food, clothing, shelter, and luxury. Okay, you're more cognizant of your sin nature than you are of these earthly things. Okay, and you pray and read the word of God more than you do anything else. Okay, which leads to faith deficit and the weight of the gospel unto the Gentiles that I promised to talk about in depth. Okay, in part two, I talked about the outstanding sin debt. Okay, the reparations that, that, that's owed by Esau, the so-called white people, okay, the Gentile nations. And I gave several examples of how sin is imputed from the forefathers to their descendants. Okay, I explained in depth how, yes, many times innocent people are harmed and even lose their life because of the sins of their fathers. Okay, in part one, I briefly introduced the topic of faith deficit, explaining how Esau, the father of the Edomites, passed on an ancestral curse to his descendants because he sold his birthright to Jacob for a morsel of food, and he disobeyed God marrying the Canaanite women, okay, moving into the mountains. All of these bad decisions by Esau because of his lack of faith, it cost his descendants, okay? It cost them a 4,000-year faith deficit because while he was in the mountains, the children of Israel were the ones abiding under the law of Moses. And God himself said he had not dealt with any other nation as with Jacob. From the Old Testament throughout the New Testament, Hebrew men were instructed by the Most High and produced his statutes, his ordinance, and his commandments. Okay, it was not until Romans chapter 11 that the Gentiles are introduced to the New Covenant and therefore grafted in after being warned how God dealt with his own heritage, Israel. And in Romans chapter 1, we learn how godless the Romans were already before the apostle Paul preached to them. If it were not for our people, the Gentiles would have not even been introduced to the covenant. Keeping in mind that Christ himself came from the lineage of Judah. So ever since the Gentiles were grafted in, 
what did they do? They added leaven with the gospel of Christ that we taught them. Okay, they established the Catholic Church and manipulated many through watered down Christianity. Okay, they changed the image of Christ to Caesar Borgia. They created Christmas, Easter, and seminary schools to cause generations to sin worse than Jeroboam, worse than Ahab, and worse than Manasseh. Okay. And two of the worst false doctrines that stem from seminary school, besides the false doctrine of who the Hebrews are, the false Jews, is once saved, always saved, and pre-tribulation rapture. Okay, they're falsely telling people they will escape in the clouds before the day of the Lord. And those who accept Christ cannot sin. This is what they're teaching them. Despite what we've read in Hebrews chapter 10 and Galatians chapter 5, which emphasizes the practice of sin, those who practice sin will not inherit eternal life, which leads us again to the weight of the gospel. What do you mean, David? Well, as I said in part one, all sin is not the same. The proof of this is the nation who rules at the end of the earth with a faith deficit, okay, because faith is not in their culture. Living by the sword is a part of their culture, okay? So considering that they're ruling at the end of the earth with a faith deficit, they also have an order of eviction from Christ himself, okay, because of their disobedience against his commandments. and. They must carry the weight of the gospel. They must carry their weight of the gospel. Let me be clear about that, okay? You got to pay for the demons that you let into the earth, okay? Through your lawmakers, okay? Through your wickedness that you've insulated yourself in by your crafty counsel, okay? Saying that, man, these black people, we can we can really start to make some money off of them. They they can jump, they can run fast, and they their, their bones are strong. They're women, uh, man. We can use them in pornography. You see that? You see how many demons that lets into the earth? Okay, so you got to pay for those demons. The sin is incredibly expensive. Because the body of Christ had to fight against those demons, which are your responsibility. You, you, you were given the earth so that you can fulfill Genesis chapter 3, or you can carry your weight of the gospel in fulfilling Genesis chapter 3, okay, which is crushing the head of the serpent. That's what we were created to do. They use the keys of the kingdom that God has given us. This is why Christ died. This was a part of the whole package. Okay. But instead, you use that dominion that God gave you to become an enemy of God and his people. It's talking about the demons coming into the earth. Who going to cast these bastards out? That's the weight of the gospel. The scriptures state. That if I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come near. Okay? That's the weight of the gospel. Okay? Instead, of, this is why Christ was so harsh against the rich. Because they can use those financial resources that they've been blessed with for a period of time to fund the weight of the gospel. Instead of segregating the church. But I'm going to get on that more later. I mean, the scriptures talk about money in the kingdom of God. But not the way that these false prophets dress it up. Okay, they only do it to swell their own pockets. If we're going to be real. In Luke chapter 12, verse 48, Christ said, To whom much is given... Much is required. Matthew chapter 6, 
verse 21 states, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see that? Talking about money in the kingdom. Because God in his infinite wisdom knew what the scripture state. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19, says money answers all things. So although the Gentiles have a faith deficit, their strength is that God permitted them to have dominion over the earth for a time so that they will have an abundance of wealth. He's not giving you this abundance of wealth for folly, for wickedness. He gives you the abundance of wealth so you can do what the church in the book of Acts was doing. Those were Gentiles laying the money at the apostles' feet. Okay, This is why, again, I talked about it in part two. James chapter 5, verse 5 says, You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. It's this the lease agreement they they've broken. Okay, you fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Okay, and in part one we already established that the wealth that you do have was built on innocent bloodshed, and it needs to be paid back in the form of reparations. It's the outstanding sin debt. We have to examine the accounts of sin. See, Geno Jennings don't. He say that he picked the scriptures apart. Dude, you don't touch these scriptures. You don't took because you're afraid. Okay, again, Christ threatens to execute judgment. This is what he's talking about in Luke chapter 6, verse 24. He's executing judgment against the rich. That's why he said, woe to you who are rich, for you've already received your comfort. Okay, he's not being vague. Okay, go back and look at the scriptures I read in part two. Okay, it, it, it may sound vague until you read James chapter five, Ezekiel chapter 30, verse one through four. Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. It says, Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. Okay, if you think Christ was just speaking in parable, that's why you got to go to uh, Acts chapter 4 verse 34 and 35. If I'm just to summarize, the multitude of believers sold their land and houses. They sold their land and houses and brought the proceeds at the apostles' feet. But why did they do that? <laughs> because the apostles did wonders. Not just preach, Gino. You claim to be an apostle. These real apostles did wonders in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, they understood that the Gentiles, who were the people who had the wealth to lay at their feet, understanding that these Gentiles had a faith deficit. And God, in his mercy, said, I'm going to empower my apostles to show them wonders. Okay. So really, as an apostle, you're supposed to be preaching to the Gentiles because there are more of them than there are of Israel. <laughs> and, and, and on top of that, like I said, they have the wealth to uphold their weight of the gospel by funding the unadulterated word of God. And as I stated before, many of you smaller preachers are just pinching at Black people, you just depending on black people. That's what Satan wanted for the church to be segregated. Okay, and you just coming, just beating up on black people. Well, God will send me somewhere else. No, his, he wants you to go into all the world, preaching to the Gentiles, convicting them of their sins. Men like Geno Jennings don't convict them of their sins according to what the scriptures state about what they're guilty of 
Okay, all sin is not the same. You got to break it down exactly what their charges are. Okay, this is what makes him a false teacher. Because if you were to do that, now you attracting that smoke that John the Baptist got beheaded for. Okay, speaking, speaking the gravest sin that the ruling authority has committed. John the Baptist got beheaded. Stephen got stoned to death. Okay. Peter in prison. The Apostle Paul in prison. Okay. James got killed by the edge of the sword. You see that. These, these apostles were put in a life in jeopardy to preach the word of God. That's why they had to have a successor. You can't be an apostle if you don't have a successor. Because if, if the ruling authority take you out for the word that you preach. Even Christ had successors. He had 12 of them. Okay? If you get taken out, then what happens to your church? That's the whole point of an apostle. To, to, to replicate, to duplicate the word of God that was given to him. Okay? And I don't believe God spoke this. That's a whole nother story. I don't believe God came to him anyway. That's why he's not functioning as an apostle. He's not doing the duties of an apostle. Okay. They were doing wonders in the name of Jesus Christ, understanding there was a faith deficit in the minds and hearts of the Gentiles. Okay. They did that so that they may believe. And in, in return, the Gentiles Bless them with the wealth that God gave them or God permitted due to our disobedience. Okay. That doesn't mean they cleared the reparations. But at that particular time, it wasn't the reparations that we're talking about to this day. So they had more of a clear conscience. They hadn't had the accumulation of demons of guilt and suicide. You see what I'm saying? So, in a nutshell, how you spend your money is a part of the weight of the gospel. Okay, this doesn't mean that so-called black people who have been blessed with wealth should just hold back there. And no, this applies to you as well. But on a larger scale of moving the body of Christ, we, we know where these wealth, the wealth has been given into the hands of the wicked. So that if the wicked repent, okay, and come and follow him, that's what Christ meant, telling the rich young ruler, go sell everything you want and give it to the poor. That's why they give the account of Zacchaeus, the tax collector, okay, giving, giving back all that he has stolen and giving back fourfold and selling half of his possessions, okay? That's the weight. That's what I mean by carrying your weight of the gospel, because white so-called white people will never have the spiritual foundation that the true Hebrew men of women of God has. OK, and then part one, that's why I talked about identifying these people, because how you look tells a lot about the, the scriptures talk about wisdom that's on the countenance of a man's face. I'm listening to your voice as well. How much folly is in your voice will tell me how much praise you've rendered to the Most High. He's, God is an intricate God. That's what he meant in chapter Romans chapter 1 when he talked about the visible and invisible things, the evidence that he's given to show that he's God. You not only see it in the trees and the skies and the grass fields, but you also see it in his creation. So when talking about the outstanding sin debt, okay, of your forefathers talking to the Gentiles, this is within the weight of the gospel. Why? Because Romans chapter 13, verse 8 says, Owe no man anything except to love one another. How can you go into the world 
preaching the love of Christ. Catch this. When your people establish the World Bank and IMF, okay, to rip off third world impoverished countries for their resources. And it, it takes money and more than one race of people to spread the gospel in all the earth. Okay, John chapter 4, verse 24 says, Worship God in spirit and truth. It's not truth. If the riches were not gained by right, according to Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 11. Okay, then you got Titus chapter 1, verse 11, which states that dishonest gain, okay, filthy lucre. You, if you have dishonest gain, the, the, that weight of guilt, guilt, okay. It's going to affect how you are in truth, in Christ, not only in truth in Christ Jesus, but ministering to all the world whom your forefathers may have afflicted. You got to relieve that, that burden, okay, according to how Christ said to do it. That's what he meant by sell everything you want, give it to the poor. Therefore, you owe no man nothing but the love of God. You see that? <laughs> Gino do not preach this. <laughs> He do not preach this. He do not preach this truth. James chapter 2 verse 16 says, If a brother or a sister is naked and destitute of daily food, which many of them people are in South Africa, okay, and you say depart in, pre in peace, but you don't minister to their need. You don't, you don't relieve them. You don't give them anything to satisfy their tangibles whether you you've not fulfilled the word of god if you don't minister to their need see this is talking to those who are rich because they have the power now that this is not mean on a lower scale those who don't have as much wealth that you don't give to the homeless this is not what it's saying but christ again in his infinite wisdom understood that Money will be a part, one of the ways to sacrifice to God for the sake of the kingdom. You can't do that by being selfish. That's why it says, a, as a as a as a whole, okay, as a whole of a people, the Gentiles. Now that you've been grafted in, okay, our forefathers upheld our end of the bargain, our spiritual spiritual abundance. We brought unto you the, to get you grafted into the new covenant. You had a deficit in that area. And because of our disobedience to the Most High, we had curses afflicted upon our people where we had a deficit financially, okay, that you were able to minister to our need in turn. And we both feed off one another in the body of Christ. You see that? And this is a big reason why the churches are so segregated. Okay? It's not just cultural differences. Okay? When your people owe an insurmountable debt, okay, it opens the door to spirits of fear, spirits of guilt, the laziness, and even them, them suicide demons. Because the burden of the gospel of Christ becomes too heavy once you learn that once saved always saved is from the mind of satan and the secret rapture does not exist okay you got to carry your own weight remember judas attempted to return the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders but remember they recognized it as blood money okay judas also recognized it as blood money because he betrayed Christ. Then what else happened? Them demons of suicide came out there. He went and committed suicide. You see that? This is why in recent history, we've witnessed a plethora of rich Caucasian males just taking their own life. You see what I'm saying? Because they inherit these peculiar, evil, suicide demons. Okay, that you almost never see in the black communities, although our people don't have as much wealth as you do. 
that despite all the afflictions of our people, we still don't take our life nearly as much as you do. Because the scriptures state that the sacrifices of God are a broken and contrite spirit. You can't sacrifice a broken spirit if you are rich. I don't care what you, you cannot sacrifice a broken and contrite spirit with a rich safety net. It's impossible. That's why Christ said, woe to you who are rich. That's your reward. That's your rest. Okay? The, because the payment that God wants for you to enter heaven, he can't do nothing with your money. He, he needs worship. He needs a broken spirit sacrificed to him. Okay? Salvation is not free. But, okay, the Gentiles... They have the most to give up if they want to be saved. They have the most to give up. Okay, you're ruling at the end of the world. You're ruling in at the fourth quarter. Okay, the game is on the line in the fourth quarter, for lack of better terms. Okay, one may bring up the grace of God. Okay, see, now this is where they begin to twist the scriptures. They may bring up the grace of God that... He, he may have mercy sparing those who don't vacate them houses. No, nah, grace, the grace of God is the 30 plus years you already spent in them houses. In the land that was built on innocent bloodshed of our people. Okay, that's grace. And then in year 31, you finally get born again. Then Yah permits recompense on your head so that someone comes along and blow your brains out and you die and go to heaven with him. Okay. Furthermore, he throws your sin of three, three decades living on blood money. Okay. Living on the blood wealth. He throws all of that into the sea of forgetfulness. When, if you committed such a crime under the law of men, he would make sure you die in prison. Okay, that's grace. That's the grace of God. Okay, the alternative is making this world your rest and the luxuries thereof. Then you go to eternal death in hell forever. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 2 says, He, meaning Christ, comes as a thief in the night. Okay, this is what I mean by eviction notice. So the Most High Yah gives you an eviction notice before he destroys you, your children, and all your things in your, your houses. Okay, so he's actually being a gentleman about it. So will there be white people in heaven? Absolutely. Absolutely. But not the way that you think. Okay. I give you an example. All those politicians that was at Joe Biden's State of the Union address, okay, including Nancy Pelosi, I guarantee you, all of them, Democrats and Republicans, they're going to be the bus hell wide open in the lake of fire. Okay. The Gentiles who will make it is just hypothetically that young white woman who gives her life to Christ and she shares the good news to mom and pop. Okay. They cut her out of the wheel because of that. You see that a man's enemies would be that of his own household. Okay. She's not invited for Christmas because she also told them she don't celebrate Christmas anymore. You see that? This is what drives me. Because every day is breaking news to me that an overwhelming majority of people are going to hell for eternity. Okay, some of the nicest people in the world who would give you their last buck, okay? They, they don't love money and they will share everything they have with you. Some of those people are going to be in hell, okay? So uh, wrapping this up, I study the scriptures from three different perspectives. Number one, I like to put myself in your shoes. Okay, if some false prophet came to me 
telling me, and I was a so-called white person, and they're telling me that I'm once saved, always saved because of some prayer that I said, and I done shook the preacher's hand. I, w I wouldn't want someone to deceive me like that. Okay, that's me putting myself in your shoes. If I'm going combing through the scriptures and I'm seeing the judgments that's coming upon my people, I would want to do everything that I could, re I could do to repent so that judgment doesn't come upon me. You see, that's me putting myself in your shoes. The second reason why I study the scriptures and the perspective I study it from is if I don't warn you, your blood is on my hands, according to the scriptures. Okay, and thirdly, if it's in God's word, I want to know why. Why did he say that? Understanding that he's an intricate God. He's a detail-oriented God. And I'm reading it from the perspective, understanding that he cannot lie. So if you put it in his word, that wickedness, as wicked as it is, has to manifest.